My name is Esmeralda Mulday. I'm a traditional folk singer and composer. And uh, this was traditional Swedish folk music. Did anyone recognize it? No. Well, I just take the easy path. I just say, I'm Swedish. I'm, I'm a Swedish folk musician, so anything I choose to take into my repertoire, I do it as a Swedish folk musician, and I don't really have to explain it, do I? And uh, since lately, the nationalists are very interested in like the genuine Swedish culture and the genuine Swedish music. I mean, the historian that was preceding me was the perfect uh, concept to have right before me because it, he was telling us how everything has changed, everything has traveled, everything is intermingled and it's happening today and it has always happened. But I'm gonna take like the opposite approach because when nationalists come to me and say, oh, it's good you do this genuinely Swedish thing. And, and you know, I, f I feel really Swedish. And, and what's, what's this with everything is blended? Like my great-great-grandmother, she did the same recipe for gingerbread that I do. And then that the ginger and the cardamom came here on different paths. It doesn't really matter because the Swedishness is a gut feeling. And the response from my colleagues and from myself many times when someone says, oh, this is genuinely Swedish, is I want to oppose it. And I want to say, no, it's really, you can break it down to this and this, and I want to analyze it, and I want to, to put it in a different concept. But that's intellectual. And you can't really always fight the irrational feelings and the gut feeling with rational intellect. So my feeling is, I just claim to be Swedish, and then I contribute to, to what that encompasses. And how many of you say, oh, it's not, it's not important for me to define myself. But then suddenly when you came abroad, you felt very Swedish. To how many of you have, has that ever happened? Yeah. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with labels or groups as long as it's inclusive and generous and there is curiosity. And it all boils down to, in my world, it boils down to, are we going to be more of the generous and curious people calling ourselves Swedish, or is it going to be more of the stingy, exclusive people calling themselves Swedish? And no two people will ever agree on what this Swedishness encompasses, but that's not important. I mean, I have more in common with like an Iraqi folk singer than I have with a Swedish banker, lots of the time. And folk musicians meet from all over, the, and even I have more in common with uh, Iraqi folk musician than I have with a classical musician in Sweden because folk music is like the party music. The music in itself is the party and you play until five in the morning and when you meet a musician you can't even speak a word to each other. You can immediately sit down and jam and improvise together and that's very typical of the folk music and also using these little notes that is in between the, the keys on the piano and that might even sound, oh that's out of tune it sounds to some ears but those are the notes that we we like to use. And so why do I have to define? I mean, it's easy, it's easy for me being part of the majority to say, oh, I'm Swedish and I don't have to define it and it's so easy. But I think there's a point there because in that way I can reach, like my neighbor, he's very nervous about Swedishness today and since I'm a folk musician, he likes to talk to me sometimes about what's gonna happen to the Swedish culture. And I think I can reach him with breaking his because he says, no, you're going to take my identity away from me. So I have to ally, be, be, be an alliance with him and say, oh, yeah, I'm really Swedish too. And, and listen to this Turkish tune that I just learned. Or now I'm studying this really interesting music from Central Africa. And to be the example of the kind of Swedishness that we like to have. Because we will always make generalizations. We will always put labels on people. And I think that's all right, the contrasts are interesting, but it's a matter of how we do that. And the humanists can't always back off and say, oh, I, don't want, I, want, I won't call anything Swedish because it's, it's really this and this and this and that. And we can't back off because then it's up to the nationalists to use that word and define that word for themselves. And how many of you have suddenly felt very much at home in a different culture, you, you land in a different space with different people and suddenly you felt, oh, I'm completely at home here. Yeah, about the same amount of people as that have felt Swedish at some point abroad. And I think that's part of 
that the human can have many identities at the same time. It's like, identity is like love. There's no mathematical limitations to it. It's not like, oh, I'm sorry, I really love my, my best friend 100%, so I, I, I can't really have another friend. And the same goes for identity. You can have several identities, and sometimes they're in conflict, sometimes it's troublesome, but we're able to shift very fluidly. And even though we don't shift our national identity, some of us don't. We shift between different roles that could be, I mean, if you think about them intellectually, they might be really conflicting, but we shift really smoothly. And I think that's a focus to have, to let people shift smoothly between their national identities. And of course, there can be clashes. And again, this is easy for me to say, since I'm looking very Swedish and live in Sweden and so on and so forth. Uh, but I think we're making it hard on ourselves and we're making it hard on each other to shift between different identities because we can really encompass more than one. And um, so I, I like to say I'm Swedish and I'm really proud of it. And, so, and some of my colleagues, they really shy away because that's really dangerous to say. And, and then there comes this uh, key fiddle, you know about the nickel harpa, the key fiddle? It's considered being very Swedish instrument, only that a hundred years ago you had no credibility playing the nickel harpa if you weren't uh, from uh, Walloon descent. Well, anyway, here comes this American playing the key fiddle. Oh, so you say you're Swedish? I mean, that's really being xenophobic. I'm writing this thesis for Brown University, and I'm, I'm putting you right in there with the nationalists. So I don't know whether to be proud of that or not, but I've been put like in the category <laughs> of xenophobic people for calling myself Swedish. And that's a sign of how much the nationalists are claiming labels. I mean, okay, labels can be dangerous, but let's fill them with so much different meaning that they get less meaning and that they're not, they don't have such harsh borders because culture don't have such harsh borders. And I think pretty much that's all. <laughs>